The Western Ghats are an ancient mountain range where rainforests burst with an explosion of life. Rivers nurture wild animals and provide water to billions of people. Age-old human cultures live alongside rare and dangerous creatures. The rain-drenched peaks of the Western Ghats hold the key to life in southern India. These are India's monsoon mountains. Western Ghats Mountains stretch 1,600 kilometers from Mumbai all the way to the southern tip of India. Running parallel to India's west coast. This spine of hills covers 6% of India's landmass, but provides a home to over 30% of its plant and animal species. Deadly snakes, rare primates, and supreme predators all live in the Western Ghats. It's one of the most biodiverse places in the world. Humans have found a home here too. For thousands of years, man has lived side by side with nature and benefited from the fertile land. The secret to this explosion of life lies in the very mountains themselves. Huge peaks rise into the path of monsoon clouds, triggering rainfall and producing one of the wettest climates in India. Tropical rainforests thrive. This jungle canopy is home to one of India's most elusive animals. Hidden among the leafy branches is the rarest macaque in the world. The lion-tailed macaque. Their dark bodies and grey manes make them difficult to spot among the shadows. The thick fur of their manes helps keep out the worst of the rain. These primates are jungle specialists. They spend most of their time eating fruit. And there's always food close at hand in the forest. These jackfruit are barely ripe. But that doesn't bother the hungry macaque. Its large canines are strong enough to tear through the fruit's tough, spiny skin. Figs are another jungle staple. And these are much more accessible to other creatures in the canopy too. The Malabar giant squirrel uses its long tail as a counterweight to help it balance while it feeds. Malabar squirrels are one of the largest squirrels in the world. They can grow to be half a meter long and weigh up to three kilos. Like their neighbors the macaques, giant squirrels spend time grooming each other. 
It reinforces bonds and helps keep parasites at bay. But the jungle is full of creatures with a far less friendly bite. A leech tests the air, groping around to find a blood meal. It will latch onto any passing mammal. But it's no more than a nuisance to a lion-tailed macaque. There are far deadlier predators in the jungle. King Cobra, the largest venomous snake in the world. These giant reptiles can grow to be over five meters long. They are the true kings of the jungle. Venturing down to the forest floor is a risky business. The cobra's eyesight is so sharp, it can spot prey moving a hundred meters away. But luckily for the lion tail, macaque is not on its menu. King cobras eat only other snakes. A hump-nosed pit viper could be in danger. but it's only 30 centimeters long, too small to be much of a meal. A three meter rat snake is more appealing. Locked onto its target, the cobra tracks its prey by smell, but not with its nostrils. It smells with its tongue. Chemical scent particles stick to its tongue and transfer to receptors on the roof of its mouth, known as the Jacobson's organ. The forks in its tongue work in stereo, enabling the cobra to pinpoint prey with deadly accuracy. King cobra inject more venom in a single bite than any other snake, enough to kill an elephant. But snakes have a built-in resistance to the poison. It takes a lot more venom to kill a snake than a mammal. So a snake-eating king cobra delivers a massive dose. One bite is all it takes. In a matter of minutes, the cobra's venom shuts down the rat snake's nervous system. Proteins in the poison start digesting the prey before the cobra's even finished swallowing. Danger is everywhere in the Indian jungle. Even the smallest animals can be deadly. A swarm of ants overwhelms a spider hundreds of times their size. A second spider intervenes. But this is no rescue mission. Spiders think nothing of making a meal of their own kind. The ants overpower it almost immediately. It's lucky to escape with its life.
Staying out of sight is the best way to stay alive. A Draco lizard is perfectly camouflaged to blend in with tree bark. Keeping still, he all but disappears. But today, this Draco wants to be noticed. He's looking for a mate. A bright flap of skin called a dewlap advertises his presence to females. But he's attracted the wrong kind of attention. A vine snake. Horizontal pupils give the vine snake acute binocular vision. It can judge distance with pinpoint accuracy. This is one of the thinnest snakes in the world. Its body is just two centimeters wide. But it's two meters long. Its mouth stretches right to the back of its head and opens so wide that it can swallow prey whole. The slender serpent moves slowly, mimicking a creeper swaying in the breeze. A perfect disguise in a world of plants. But the Draco senses danger and plays its trump card. Flexing its ribcage spreads out a membrane of skin to make a simple but effective wing. More than half of India's 238 species of amphibia live in the rainforests of the Western Ghats. Many are found nowhere else on Earth. With primitive lungs, amphibians supplement their air intake by absorbing oxygen through their skin. The purple or pig-nosed frog was only identified by scientists in 2003. It spends 50 weeks of the year buried underground. The purple frog is unique in India. Its closest relatives live 3,000 kilometers away in the Seychelles. Pig-nosed frogs are living fossils and proof of the Western Ghats' ancient origins. They're a throwback to a time when India and Africa were connected. 150 million years ago, the supercontinent Gondwana began to split apart and the triangular landmass that is now modern India broke away. This Indian plate drifted northwards over a volcanic hotspot. Boiling magma pushed up into the Earth's crust and heated the land. The edge of the Indian plateau morphed and faulted into a crumpled line of mountains. By the time India bumped into mainland Asia and began pushing up the Himalayas, the Western Ghats were long established and already home to a wealth of wildlife. It's early summer, the height of the breeding season for king cobras. This male is looking for a mate. But the snake he's found is not a female, it's a rival male. This patch of forest isn't big enough for both of them. 
It's a serpentine standoff. They growl a warning at each other. A low frequency hiss. Air is sucked into their elongated lungs and squeezed out through the mouth as each snake constricts its body. Neither is willing to back down. The only option is to fight. This is a battle of strength, not weaponry. The huge snakes are immune to each other's venom. Each weighs up to nine kilograms and uses all its might and muscle to try and grapple the other to the ground. Finally, the stronger snake triumphs. The loser slinks off to find new territory. Tensions are running high above the forest floor too. Up in the canopy, a Nilgiri Langu asserts his alpha male status. As soon as younger males start to show an interest in his harem of females, the dominant male chases them out of the troop. He's taking no chances and won't tolerate any competition. the end of summer. Monsoon clouds have been building over the Arabian Sea, sucking up moisture from the ocean. Now they sweep towards land, pulled in by the low pressure void of India's hot, dry interior. They slam straight into the Western Ghats. The tallest peak is Anamudi, the elephant's head. It reaches 2,695 meters and is the highest point in India outside the Himalayas. Rain-filled clouds are forced up the steep slopes where they cool and condense. On the Western Ghats exposed peaks, Nilgiri Tar brave the relentless mist and rain. Also known as cloud goats, they're well adapted to wet weather. Water runs off their coarse, short hair like a raincoat, keeping their skin warm and dry. One of India's most ancient tribes also make their home in the high plateau of the Western Ghats. The Toda people are peaceful pastoralists buffalo herders with a reverence for the natural world. The domed roofs of their houses mirror the rolling hills of their homeland. Low doorways are designed to keep out wild animals. Milk is the main source of protein for the Toda people, and butter was traditionally used as currency. But buffalo are far more than a commodity. They are sacred. 
the Toda believed that the goddess Tekoshi created buffalo first among animals and then created the Toda man to care for them. The only time a buffalo is ever killed is when a man dies. It's believed that the buffalo's spirit will keep a man company on his journey to the afterlife. The Toda believe that the next world is much like this one, but has a harder surface. Instead of wearing down the land, wandering souls wear down their own legs. When they have no limbs left, they are reborn as Toda people or buffalo. The Toda believe their people have lived in the Western Ghats since the birth of humankind. Today there are fewer than 1400 left clinging to their traditional way of life. The Western Ghats are known locally as Sayadris, the benevolent mountains. The peaks are a natural barrier to the monsoon weather system and intercept the rains. The sodden forests on the western slopes release water vapor back into the air, where it condenses and falls again as rain. This double deluge makes these tropical jungles some of the wettest places in India. Some areas receive 10 meters of rainfall every year. The rainforests teem with life, but the benevolent mountains sustain life hundreds of kilometers away too. The coastal plains of Kerala, sandwiched between the Arabian Sea and the Western Ghats, are some of the richest land in India. Runoff from the hills washes down to the coast, and the rivers and streams are laden with fertile sediment. Fruit seeds sprout where they fall. Kerala's backwaters are a labyrinth of channels. Rivers replace roads. The west coast of India is where ancient man first set foot on the subcontinent. And here he stayed. Every non-African person in the world can trace their roots back to the first of humankind who settled in this land of plenty. Today, the beaches are still crawling with life. Armies of ghost crabs emerge at twilight to feed. The tastiest morsels are found on wet sand. But getting to them means running a gauntlet of breaking surf. beetle is packed with protein and worth the effort. But crabs aren't the only hunters here. It pays to keep one eye on the sky. A young Brahmini kite scours the shore for food. The crab shells are almost translucent, so they can be hard to spot against the sand. But to a kite with laser-sharp eyesight, ghost crabs are easy targets. Thanks to the Western Ghats, the rainforests and coastal plains get more than their fair share of rain each year. 
But on the eastern side of the mountains, it's a very different story. The Deccan Plateau is a vast expanse of basalt that comprises the main part of southern India. The Western Ghats mountain range blocks monsoon clouds and forces them to release rain on their western side. East of the mountains, the woodlands and plains of the plateau receive just a tenth of this rainfall. Forests here are very different from the damp, dark jungles. The trees have broad leaves which soak up as much sunlight as possible, but are dropped in the dry season to conserve moisture. Chital deer browse on the nutrient-packed leaves, and where there are herbivores, there are hunters, tigers. These big cats usually hunt at night, but with extra mouths to feed, this mother must try and seize every opportunity she can. But she's not always successful. Only one in 20 tiger hunts ends in a kill. There's a much smaller, but more efficient predator at large here. Indian wild dogs, or dole, are pack animals. They live in tight-knit groups, led by an alpha pair, and are organized in a strict social hierarchy. Every dog in the pack knows its place. Unlike tigers, the dogs don't use stealth as a strategy. Their tactic is teamwork. Doles whistle to keep in contact during a hunt. Each individual has an important role to play. They work like a well-oiled machine. The cheetah's tail flashes white to warn others of danger. But it also helps the dogs to keep track of their quarry. Working together, Dole can bring down prey ten times their own size. The whole pack feed on the kill together, and it pays to eat quickly. An adult can swallow four kilos of meat, almost a quarter of its own body weight, in under an hour. Even the tigress gets a meal at last. She may have failed to make her own kill, but she's wily enough to take advantage of a rival's success. Tigers are a universal symbol of the power of nature, and are revered throughout India. But few go to such lengths to express their admiration for tigers as the Karuba people of the Western Ghats. Every September, during the Dussehra festival, folk dancers from the Karuba tribe let their inner animal run wild and dance the Huli Vesha, the tiger dance. The dancer's moves mimic the big cat's stealth and power. Lemons held in their mouths symbolize the animal's deadly grip on its prey. 
These men have been dancing the Huli Vesha since they were children, taught by their fathers and grandfathers. They grew up in a village in the Western Ghats, close to the forest and surrounded by nature. The tiger dance is a way for them to express their deep connection to wildlife. Travelling around villages to perform their dance brings spectators from far and wide. It takes many hours to paint and decorate their bodies, but the patterns will last several days. The men earn tips for their acrobatics. But the dance has a deeper meaning. The Huli Vesha is a celebration of the wild world and a reminder of man's dependence on nature. The Western Ghats keep rain away from the Deccan Plateau. But the mountains still play a crucial role in supplying it with water. The mountains harvest rain, channeling it down the hillsides and feeding it to streams and rivers. The uplift caused when the Western Ghats mountains were formed means that all southern India's major rivers flow west to east across the Deccan Plateau. They include some of the country's most spectacular waterfalls. And they are a lifeline to the whole of southern India. They supply water to nearly a quarter of a billion people. One such river, the Kauvery, is considered sacred. It's known as the Ganges of the South and worshipped all along its length. An entire temple has been built in the hills around the river's source. People come from all over southern India to bathe in this holy water. The same family of priests has been presiding over these rituals for nine generations. The river is a lifeline for animals too. It provides sanctuary for dozens of bird species. A male egret performs an elaborate courtship display. Special wispy feathers on his back are designed to catch a female's eye. It works. But the female changes her mind at the last minute. Undeterred, he starts his dance again, in an attempt to win her favour and mate. Storks and pelicans already have young. Hordes of hungry chicks wait noisily for their hard-working parents to bring back food. 
Their legs aren't strong enough for them to stand upright yet. And they're vulnerable on the slippery rocks. The cavalry also hides some river monsters. A pair of eyes peeping above the water give one predator away. Mugger crocodiles can grow to be four and a half meters long. Moving through the shallows stirs up tiny fish. A heron takes advantage of the feeding opportunity. But it's taking a risk. A mugger can snatch a meal from the riverbank in the blink of an eye. Fortunately, this crocodile doesn't seem hungry. Crocodiles are cold-blooded. They rely on the elements to maintain their body temperature and spend plenty of time basking in the sun. Under each bony scale is a cluster of blood vessels that absorb heat like tiny solar panels. Muggers can't sweat. But if they get too warm, they release heat through their mouths. These are social animals with a strict dominance hierarchy. Males fight for supremacy over territory, and battles can sometimes be brutal. Two of India's giants thrive in the Western Ghats, thanks to the river systems that originate in the mountains. Gaur are the biggest species of wild cattle on the planet. Adults can stand over two meters at the shoulder and brandish horns that can be a meter long. They're one of the world's largest land animals and can weigh over a ton. Only tigers are capable of preying on these giant cows. But Gaur have been known to fight back and kill tigers in self-defense. The only animal here to outstrip Gaur in size are elephants. The Western Ghats are home to the largest wild population of Asian elephants in the world. This female is the matriarch of her family. She's the oldest and leads a herd of her sisters, daughters and their young. Elephants live in very close-knit groups. This two-month-old calf is taught everything he needs to know by his family. A mud bath is fun, but it also helps protect an elephant's skin from insect bites and acts like sunscreen. Adult elephants need to eat over 130 kilos of vegetation every day. They roam great distances in a never-ending search for food. The matriarch's knowledge of pathways, water sources and grazing opportunities has been passed down to her through generations. And in turn, she too passes it on. During the drier months, rivers recede and expose fresh green banks of grass. The shoots are full of nutrients, and elephants gather from far and wide to picnic on these lawns. A mouthful of mud may not seem appetizing, but it supplements an elephant's mineral intake. Okay. 
Elephants roam all over the Western Ghats, but their wanderings bring them dangerously close to another inhabitant. Man benefits from the incredible productivity of the rain-soaked western slopes. Spices such as black pepper and cardamom are cultivated in huge quantities here, fueling India's historic spice trade. And the fertile hills provide the ideal climate for one particular type of camellia, tea. The slopes are a patchwork of plantations. A century ago, unbroken forest stretched for 150,000 square kilometers across the Western Ghats. Today, scattered fragments make up less than 13,000. The region's high rainfall means tea fields need never be irrigated. And the sloping landscape keeps their roots from getting waterlogged. It's perfect tea country. But estates disrupt ancient animal migration routes. And elephants have no choice but to cross the plantations. They don't eat the tea, but sometimes they do cause damage to villages. As many as 400 people are killed by elephants in India every year. Gower also visit tea plantations. In this organic tea field, where no herbicides are used, Gower provide a very useful service. They graze on weeds that grow between the rows of tea, keeping the plantation clear. Gower and elephant venture out of the forest, but lion-tailed macaques never cross cultivated areas. Small groups are isolated in the remaining patches of forest. This baby is the newest addition to a macaque family, led by a dominant male. She will stay with the troop all her life, fitting into the hierarchy as she gets older. But this young male will eventually break away from his family and join a bachelor group. He's already showing signs of independence. The little male investigates every nook and cranny, looking for things to eat. As well as fruit and seeds, insects, birds' eggs and lizards are all on a macaque's menu. They'll even eat young squirrels if they find an unguarded nest. This older macaque has found a good meal. He quickly and quietly gathers as much food as possible before a more dominant troop member claims the supply. His extendable cheek pouches can hold as much as his stomach. Up in the canopy, he can finish his meal in peace. But his future is uncertain. The balance between man and animals is becoming increasingly fragile. As India gallops forward into the 21st century and its population edges over 1.2 billion, it's getting harder to make space for wildlife. The crops and spices harvested on the slopes of the Western Ghats are exported all over the world. From Kerala's backwaters, they're sent out across the Indian Ocean, the birthplace of the monsoon rains 
that play such a vital role in the mountain's biodiversity. The benevolent mountains have plenty to give. But man could be taking too much. Lion-tailed macaques only live here, in the rainforests of the Western Ghats. They're one of the most endangered primates in the world. Less than 1% of their original habitat survives. It's only in the last century that the Western Ghats have been exploited by man. People have been living in harmony with nature here for 12,000 years. Surrounded by such biodiversity, they see themselves as part of the natural world. But sharing space with some forest animals can be risky. This family have had to evacuate their house. There's an unwanted guest making itself at home in their kitchen. A king cobra. But help is on the way. Gowi Shankar is a local snake handler who works to keep king cobras and people safe from each other. In many parts of Asia, fear of deadly snakes Gauri and his colleague Prashant plan to take this one alive. Here in the Western Ghats, most people are remarkably tolerant of living alongside such a daunting reptile. Many believe king cobras control the thunder and rain, something they see plenty of. They are revered as goddesses of fertility. Harming them is taboo. But extracting a four-meter cobra from its hiding place under the eaves is no easy task. Although they don't attack humans as prey, a king cobra can be a dangerous house guest. One bite packs enough poison to kill 20 men. It's out of the house, but that's only half the battle. Cobras like to hide in dark corners. And Gowrie hopes this one will slink into the sack he's prepared. But it's proving to be uncooperative. The snake's reactions are lightning fast. And it has a strike distance of two meters. Gowrie is well within range. A change of tactic finally gets the mighty snake under control. Gowrie and Prashant rescue an average of 22 king cobras from situations like this every year. The snake is taken a safe distance away from the village and released back to the forest.
King cobras are an icon of the Western Ghats, surviving in an ancient ecosystem and protected by the reverence of man. The Western Ghats are one of the world's most remarkable biodiversity hotspots. Intercepting monsoon clouds and harvesting rainfall, the mountains have a profound effect on the climate of southern India. They are home to wild creatures, from flying lizards and deadly snakes to endangered primates and formidable hunters. Humans have lived alongside animals here for millennia. But the 20th century has taken its toll on this ancient ecosystem. Much of its forest has been destroyed to make room for crop cultivation. And many species are now staring extinction in the face. But the spirit of the Hulivesha tiger dance runs deep in the indigenous people of the Western Ghats. And they do make room for wild animals. There is plenty for everyone here, as long as man continues to find his niche without destroying that of others.